Blitz for getting us up and running here, and uh, thanks everybody for taking time out of your day uh, to come join me. We're going to look at uh, Power BI version 2 uh, and beyond. So we're going to look at Power BI, where it's come from, where we are today, and some of the recent updates that have come out. We'll do some demos on that, and then just real briefly uh, show you uh, or just talk about what Microsoft's um, BI roadmap is going forward and how Power BI hope, uh, plays a part of that. So it's good to see that poll that there's a lot of people that are new to Power BI here. Um, I think you have some good content to help you get your feet wet about where that will fit within your, within your organizations. So let me introduce myself first. I'm Brad Gall. I'm a senior consultant here with Pragmatic Works. Um, my contact information is there on the screen. Uh, you can email me at bgall at pragmaticworks.com. Uh, I have a blog for bradgall.com. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Brad Gall SQL. Uh, and if anyone has questions or uh, runs into issues with the content, feel free to reach out to me as you start playing around with Power BI. A little bit more about myself. I've been working with SQL and SharePoint Business Intelligence um, for over 10 years now. I like to speak at user groups and webinars. Uh, I spoke recently at the, the PASS group here within, in Cincinnati. Um, I'm, and I'm an avid Packer fan. so. Uh, not too happy about the way the playoffs went for, for my team recently, but that's all right. We get over it. So let's hop over to our agenda for today. So what I want to do today is kind of look at uh, at a high-level agenda, uh, look at the past RBI, just do a short history of where this product came from, uh, which will give you, I think, a good idea as you navigate through uh, the Internet looking at blogs about what people are referring to out there. Uh, we're going to look at where Power BI, dot, Power BI is now. So we're going to look at the updates that have come out recently, and this is where I'll do some demos, and then look at where Power BI is going, uh, at least hopefully. So I don't have any inside information. Everything I'm showing here is public uh, information that Microsoft has put out in their roadmap on the website. Um, so this is a, that's what I mean by at least hopefully. This is what they've said and they've committed that they are going to do with the roadmap. And if they do uh, accomplish that, it's really exciting where, where, where what we're going to have for reporting from Microsoft. So how did we get here? So let's take a look at a little bit behind the data with Power BI. So a short history on, on the desktop application of Power BI. Um, and that's the first thing to note really is that Power BI is now um, – at least on the on the PowerBI.com site, separated into two pieces. We have the Power BI desktop application, and we have the PowerBI.com a service. Um, they both interact with each other. They're completely seamlessly interact with each other. But as updates come out, they come out for one product or the other. Um, so a short history on the desktop piece first. Uh, it started really Power BI started as uh, add-ins to Excel. Initially, it wasn't even really called Power BI. It came out as a, uh, the first add-in, I believe, was Power Pivot for Excel. They added Power View and then Power Query, and then they eventually came out with this umbrella idea of Power BI to wrap around all those add-ins for Excel. A lot of people still use those Excel add-ins, and they, they can still be used today. And that's primarily, I think, because of the, the relative um, newness of the Power BI uh, desktop. Not all of the features have also been pulled over into Power BI Desktop yet. They're getting really close. The majority of them are there. They have a lot of new features that aren't available in the Excel add-ins. Um, but they, there's a few little things that are still missing that I think will be there shortly. But a little bit more on that history. Um, around December 2014, they came out with uh, the application called Power BI Designer, and that was a preview product. And that was when they first separated from Excel and brought those different add-ins into its own separate product. So they put Power Query, Power Pivot, and Power View into one product and integrated them together to where we have a, a way to pull data with Power Query. Uh, we model it with the Power Pivot model, and then we uh, report on it with Power View. They, they got rid of those Power names, and they just really call it um, uh, Get Data is the Power Query. Um, the model and the relationships is what would be the equivalent of Power Pivot, and then just reports within um, would be the equivalent of Power View. Now, in July of last year uh, was really when Power BI Desktop went general acceptance. So we're talking about a pretty new product. That's when they renamed the designer to Power BI Desktop. So that's why I said if you're, if you're out there Googling around and you come across references to Power BI Designer, 
that was really just the uh, initial name of Power BI Desktop. Um, in July, when it did come out, that was really um, whenever it was referred to as Power BI version 2, um, with that general acceptance release in, in July of 2015. That's also when they went from the green logo and they switched over to our, our nice yellow and a black uh, branding there. So a short history on the service. Uh, initially with the add-ins with Excel, really your only option to get them out for collaboration was to put them into uh, an on-premise SharePoint implementation, um, which, which it worked. It took a lot of, and it still does take a lot of um, legwork by your infrastructure team to get your SharePoint farm up and ready to accept those Power Pivot models. But once that was done, uh, you could upload a Power Pivot model into SharePoint and set up scheduled refresh, and everyone could go and collaborate and look at those reports that you created. Uh, with the advent of the cloud, they came out with an Office 365 Power BI sites. Um, this is where we could start uploading those into the cloud. You didn't have to have that um, big footprint of an enterprise SharePoint implementation and set up, and you could collaborate in those sites. Um, it was a little quirky there, though, because it was still integrated with SharePoint, so you had to have the SharePoint license, and then you had to tack on a Power BI license on top of that. And it was a little quirky how those two integrated together. So luckily, they, they did away with those Power BI 365 sites, and now we have PowerBI.com for our, uh, our cloud service for Power BI. And again, that one went general acceptance July of last year with the Power BI desktop application. Uh, and that really gives us the nice sem seamless... Um, integration between the desktop and the service. So we can publish our files from our desktop application straight up into the service. Uh, you don't have to have an online cloud version of SharePoint to run PowerBI.com. Uh, really, you can just uh, you can get a free account on PowerBI.com, which gives you 10 gigs. Um, and then for a pro license, is really just it's $10 a user. So they simplified the licensing model there quite a bit too. Um, since the release of Power BI Desktop, they've, Microsoft has um, published that they're going to follow a, an update schedule going forward, which is a lot more a lot more frequent than a lot of their other products, and they've pretty much stuck with this. So monthly, they come out with Power BI Desktop updates. Uh, the the July update actually should probably be out any day. I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't be the first time that um, maybe by the end of the day it comes out and it makes some of my content irrelevant already from today. So that's how quickly things are moving with the updates with Power BI. They're even more frequent with the, the service updates. So uh, weekly-ish, I put, um, they, they come out with updates for the PowerBI.com. So sometimes they're weekly, sometimes they'll skip a week. Um, but really, as updates are available, they, they go ahead and get them published out there on the PowerBI.com site. Um, this is a good and bad thing, in my opinion, because um, it's really good. They get as soon as something's ready, they get it out there. So you're not waiting for a real long development life cycle of uh, 50 features to get the one feature that you want out there. The downside of it is it can become um, a burden to try and keep track of what was updated and when. And um, hey, how did I miss that update? I didn't even know this button was here. Uh, so if you search long and hard enough. You can find a list of the updates out on the Power BI site. Uh, on, on TechNet, they break them down by article. So as a, a new Power BI desktop update comes out, you'll get a, a new TechNet or MSDN article published out there, giving you a, uh, a list of all what's included in this update, and, and those are broken down per month. They do the same thing with the, the weekly updates with Power BI. But what's handy is to be able to see all the updates together, and that's what these two links will give you is a, a list of all the updates by month and when they came out and what everything was there. Um, we're going to take a look at that um, here in a second. I just got one more slide before we hop over there too, because um, I want to show you this as well. They also have a website for ideas.powerbi.com. So a lot, a lot of software products are doing this, and it's a really great thing where you can go and uh, create a feature request and vote on requests that are already out there, and it gives Microsoft an idea of uh, what the community is really wanting and where they should focus their development efforts. And when you put that in tandem with the, the frequent update re uh, release schedule, it, it seems like it's working pretty well and they're getting to the updates that people uh, really want. And another handy thing with that is if you do go out there and, and just all you do is sign in with your PowerBI.com, um, log in and you just click a tick mark to upvote what you want to see, you'll get an email sent to you whenever the update does come out. So. Uh, that's nice and handy uh, way to follow the updates that you you care about. So let's go take a look at those sites real quick. 
I just want to show you. So this is the Power BI desktop update site um, that's linked from that slide. Uh, I'll put my slide deck out on my my blog my, my blog so that everyone can go look at that um, and get these links if you're interested in them as well. They're also just underneath the support documentation, and under the get started, you can find the what's new and the latest Power BI desktop update. And like I said. The great thing about this is, so the last update was December 2015. We can see they added some new report authoring um, options here. They made some uh, new additions to the relationships view within Power BI Desktop. So zooming slider, fit to zoom button, um, some little polish and shine things that were missing before. As we scroll down, you get a YouTube video of uh, demoing all the different updates. But what's nice about this list is it gives you a list of all the different months. So now, uh, as I scroll down, I can go find out what was in November. And so if you're not checking this every day, as I, I'm sure you guys are all hitting PowerBI.com every day to see exactly what came out new. If that's not you, and every couple months, maybe you uh, happen to get some time to try and figure out what's new, and uh, you can come out here and see everything all in one spot over the last three months, maybe, of what uh, has changed within the product. It's the same for the service. So for the Power BI service, they have the what's new in the Power BI service. And again, it's important to note that they release the updates uh, specific to those two different pieces of Power BI. So you may see something come out, um, and you need to pay attention to which, which piece of Power BI it was uh, implemented for. So for instance, um, printing was just released for the Power BI service for dashboards. Um, one of the 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 things that's missing from Power BI Desktop is you can't, there's no print button for a report, which is something a lot of people want and are waiting for. Um, and they did release it, but they released it for the service. So I'm imagining it's going to come quickly for the desktop after this, but uh, just keep in mind that the releases are for each specific product. But again, out here for the Power BI service, uh, for recent updates, it gives you the list of the week it came out, and then all the different updates broken down by the category uh, for those. And then the last thing I want to show was this ideas.powerbi.com site. So for the ideas.powerbi, if you just go to that URL, it takes you to their feedback, um, the part of Power BI. And this is where once you've signed up, you can come in and, and um, enter your idea, type it out, explain to them what you're looking for. And we can also look at the ideas that are out there now. So if I do a search by top, we can see we have a couple big guys guys out here that are, are waiting. Um, one is to share with external users outside of my organization. So that's the one that a lot of people are looking for, 5,000 votes already. And uh, Microsoft will uh, update these as development starts or planned or if they're just not going to be able to do that idea. So the nice thing is they are starting on uh, development for share with external users, which is another um, big update that I know a lot of people are, are looking for, would, would love to have. Another one is Power BI on-premises, uh, or on-premise, I mean, uh, which is a planned one. So that's another great uh, thing to hear that they're planning on doing that. Hopefully that switches over to started soon. Switch back to my slide deck. So that's, a, a, like I said, a real brief history on where we came from with Power BI and how we've gotten to Power BI Desktop and PowerBI.com. So let's take a look at where we are now and um, point out some of the, the latest updates. Um, if you're interested in a, a good demo on the Power BI desktop, a uh, quick one-hour demo uh, of using it and the new features there compared to the old Excel, uh, Devin Knight did a really good job of that uh, last year on the Pragmatic Works free training. So if you go out there, and, and do a search for, or uh, on our website now, you can actually just click Power BI. You'll see that he did one in August of last year. That walks you through with real good demos of importing data, manipulating data, and creating some reports off of it. Uh, what I'm going to look at today is mostly some of the enhancements that have come out recently for, for Power BI, so you can kind of see some of the stuff that's come out lately. And a lot of it was some polish and shine type improvements, um, getting it up to par with uh, some of the pieces that were missing between uh, the new version and what was available in Excel. So we have things like we can enter data uh, now. So this is similar to where to Excel where we could uh, type in a quick 
quick and dirty table within Excel and then import it into our Power Pivot model. We can now do that in Power BI. They gave us a button that just opens up a grid screen and we can enter some data there. One of the things that Power BI, Power BI Desktop uh, is better at than Power View in Excel is that there's some more options with interactions between the visuals there, so more of the visuals interact with each other. And along with that, what they've added recently is the ability to edit how those visuals interact. So if you have one visual that you don't necessarily want to slice down when you click on a bar in another visual, you have the ability to control that now. We can do things like insert shapes and text boxes and images within our reports now. Uh, they've started to make it easier to align objects. So if you've ever used Power View, it can be kind of annoying as you're trying to resize objects around on your canvas. They don't really snap together or um, align each other very well. You kind of have to just eyeball it and do it yourself. They added uh, properties for X and Y coordinates um, for um, left and right and, and height and width for our objects. So we can line those up a little bit easier until hopefully they'll get us the, uh, the snap to grid type functionality too. They give us lots of customizations around labels, uh, which we didn't have within Excel Power View. So we can do things like uh, increase our label size, change, um, I believe the font, yeah, you can change the fonts too. Um, I know you can change the font size for sure, change colors of those, uh, turn on data, the labels if we want to. Uh, things like that for all of our labels, and same for the titles. And that's just to name a few of the enhancements. Uh, you saw the list that we had out on the website a, a little bit ago. Now, a few of the bigger updates that have come out over the past six months that um, that, that were big updates that people really wanted, um, at least in my opinion, we'll go through those now. Drill down and drill up was one of the really big ones, I think, that a lot of people wanted. Um, and this really comes from, I know, a lot of people really like, liked at least Performance Point because of its drill down and drill up capabilities. They've added that here in Power BI uh, Desktop and PowerBI.com, thankfully, and they did a really good job with it. Um, so you see the little drop up and down arrows there. That's the, the visual that we use to, to turn on, drill down and drill up um, within our canvas. And we can drill up and down a hierarchy that we build just by dragging and pulling over attributes from our tables. Along with that, they also added a built-in date drill down. And again, I'll demo this, but uh, basically if you have a, any date column within your data and you drag it into your canvas, Power BI will automatically turn it into a, a date hierarchy for you. So you don't even have to have a, a dim date set up within your source. This is great for self-service implementations where you're just kind of mashing up some data real quick. You don't have to worry about getting your, your dim date table pulled in as well if you're just trying to do something quick and dirty. Another really exciting uh, update that they came out with over the past six months is custom visuals. Um, with custom visuals, it gives you the ability to develop your own visuals if you want to. So they have a GitHub site where they've put this out as open source. Um, they've, they've made their visuals open source so you can write your own if you want to, if you have a development team that could do that. Uh, but for the self-service guys like me that aren't, aren't really going to go develop in some C-sharp stuff like that, uh, they also give us our visual gallery. So this is a community-driven community gallery where uh, the community is, is giving Microsoft some visuals they've created that they want to share with the community, and Microsoft is putting them out on this, um, on this visual gallery. And again, there's a link for that. It's at, at powerbi.com slash visuals. And uh, we'll take a look at that go look at the visuals that are out there. And, and um, pulling the visuals from the gallery into our Power BI desktop is extremely easy. We can just uh, go out to the gallery, download it, and then it's just a couple button clicks to pull those new visuals in to our reports in Power BI. There's a lot of changes recently around our gateways, and this can be a, a, a minefield to navigate um, for Power BI still. Uh, there's working the kinks out with it, um, but really gateways, if you're not aware of them, they're a way for uh, they're a way for Power BI to get access to your on-prem data. So if you set up a Power BI desktop uh, report, uh, Power BI file, and point it to a SQL server that's on-premises, when you upload it to the PowerBI.com service up to the website in the cloud, it has to have a way to get back into your, your network to get to that data to do a refresh. We have two options right now for that. We have a personal gateway, and that is the one that's actually out um, 
out and, and supported. And this is set up per user, so it comes from the self-service um, side of Power BI. Um, it's only you set up one per user, and it can be set up on a desktop. I have one running on my laptop right now, actually. Um, it's really currently the only option that's that's not in preview. And again, once you set up that gateway, um, and it's on your laptop, and then you publish uh, a Power BI com file up to the to the service that service then knows to use the gateway to come in through your desktop to get to the data it needs whenever you schedule the refreshes there um, they now have a preview for enterprise gateway and this is a, a gateway that could be set up for multiple users so one gateway would support multiple users it passes the security through to the source is one of the ideas with this so that you can use uh, things like row level security and have that um, pass through into your reports within Power BI. Again, this is currently still in preview, but you can go and get it now and download it and start testing it. Um, and they have said this is going to replace what they currently have out there. They have announced the services connectors out there now. This is going to replace those eventually because the enterprise gateway allows connectivity to things like um, SAP, uh, SQL databases, and then tabular and multidimensional analysis services databases. And with the analysis services connector and with the enterprise gateway, what it does is gives you direct connection into your analysis services databases. So it doesn't have to upload all the data up there. It can just uh, live browse those uh, AS databases. So another new improvement, so when Power BI initially came out, really there was, you just had your own workspace. It's pretty limited in as far as how you could collaborate with uh, another team of, say, business analysts or maybe another, uh, other developers. Really, if you created a, uh, a data source and a report and dashboards out there, you could share them with other people to view them, but they couldn't, you couldn't work on them with other people. There's an idea of content packs, which still exist, where you can bundle them up and put them out there to be shared on your organization. But again, that was kind of disconnected from each other. You weren't sharing, working on the same, on the same files. Uh, so what they came out with were um, our group workspaces now, where you can save your reports and dashboards in a group workspace, um, have give multiple people edit rights to them, and then multiple people can work on work on them at the same time. Right now, these work, work groups are actually tied to uh, Office 365 still. So if you just have Power BI, you, you also have to have uh, the pro version of Power BI to run these. But if you just have that, you're still going to run into an issue, unfortunately, because you'll need the, um, uh, the Office 365 groups to make this work. Uh, really, it's using the exchange groups behind the scenes. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind for, for those. Um, another thing they've added here uh, fairly recently is the ability to show off workbooks in the Power BI service. So this is something solely on the service side. If you have a workbook and you have it saved in OneDrive, you can display the workbook similar somewhat to Excel services and SharePoint within PowerBI.com site. Um, so instead of creating a whole new report based off that report, that Excel data, you can just show the sheets of your Excel file right within the Power BI uh, site. It'll, the sheet will show up like a report, and then from there you can pin uh, charts or sheets to dashboards within the Power BI.com service. And a nice thing about this is since it's on OneDrive, it, is, uh, it supports scheduled refresh just like if you took your Excel file and uh, imported it as a data source into Power BI. Uh, last thing before I jump over to demos is to point out that uh, I don't want to sound like too much of a cheerleader for Power BI in Microsoft. I do like it. I love it. It's a great product. Really excited about where it's going. Uh, just want to point out it's still a work in progress and there's still frustration that you can run into with it. So for instance, they just came out with a Excel published to Power BI uh, Excel add-in literally this week, I believe, at least when I saw it. I went to go download it, and the first error I get is, uh, hey, you need to have a 32-bit version of Excel to run this, um, which if most of you are working with um, Power BI type products with Excel, you'll, you know, you, you'll know that you're more than likely running a 64-bit version of Excel. So they do have some kinks to work out. Again, it's some of the give and take of the quick release schedule. They get things out there to get it to as many people as they can, 
um, and we may they may have some things that they need to polish around it. So a few other ones like custom custom visualizations, which I'm going to show you today, they still have some annoying warnings that pop up quite a bit up on the Power BI site. Um, they have said that they're going to start dialing those back though, because uh, again, because the community feedback was that that um, it pretty much makes it fairly unusable for making it a really professional looking report when you use those on the the, the website. So they're going to dial those back. Uh, the print. Um, I was excited to see print was coming out because I knew some people wanted that, and then it's only for printing dashboards in the web service right now. Um, and then things like Direct Connect for multidimensional is still preview only with the desktop. So just keep in mind, the uh, big thing to call out here really is don't let Lucy pull the ball out from underneath your foot. Um, don't go running to your boss saying, hey, the Power BI is going to solve all of our problems. Um, make sure you do a test on the updates, but as they come out, make sure it really fits exactly what you're expecting it to work for. Let's hop over to some demos. I want to show off some of these uh, features here. So let me close this down. And I have a couple of Power BI desktop files open just in case things start to crash on me, but let's open up a new, a new Power BI desktop model. One second here. Let me open my Zoom in real fast first, too. So. Nope. Get that going in case I need it. All right, so we're in Power BI Desktop. I'm going to go get some data. I'm going to go grab it from uh, SQL Server. So I have some, some baseball data that we're going to take a look at just for demoing today. Going to give it my server name, and I'm just going to go ahead and give it my database name because I know what it is. And we're going to click OK. Now, since I gave it a database name, it's going to pop up and give me the list of all the tables and views and everything I have within that database. Uh, let's grab a few things. So let's just grab um, some batting stats. Uh, I got some salary data here. And then a few dimensions to go around that. Uh, this is pseudo formatted into a star schema, not 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 really very um, uh, much time put into that though. So I have my players, my teams, uh, pseudo dates, dimension around years, some batting data, and some salary data. Well, let's go ahead and pull all that in. And I'm just going to load it. We're not going to look at Power Query too much today. Again, Devin does a good job of going through that in in his. Um, in his presentation. So we're just going to click load and load this into our model. Now this is the, the screen I wanted to show you. It's another fairly new option within Power BI Desktop is certain sources support direct query. So this is similar to direct query that you have within uh, tabular databases if, if you're familiar with that. And really my options are here to um, import my data. So pull it into my Power BI Desktop File, which would pull it into the, uh, it would pull it into the um, in-memory engine within Power BI Desktop and compress it, and then I would have to schedule refreshes to pull the data in. Or I could do direct query and uh, have the Power BI Desktop file directly query the database every time the report is run. So this would give you real-time data if a, a table changes in the SQL database, it'll update. The, the report will be using that most recent data. Uh, I'm going to stick with the import for our demos. The direct query, it does work. Uh, I have one out on Power BI uh, service right now. It goes through your personal gateway once you save it up there. Or if you're working within Power BI Desktop, it just works directly against the SQL database. Um, and like I said, it just pulls in, uh, doesn't even pull in. It just queries the most recent data. Let's do an import here. It's going to load my, my different tables. And the first thing I also want to show is if I go to my relationship view here on the left, you can see the relationships. It automatically created relationships for me based off of my 
um, column names. So these are actually views, these aren't tables and there's no foreign keys created within my database. It just created the relationships based off the data and the, um, the column names I had in my data. Uh, it didn't do it for years because you'll notice that uh, year name is the name of my, my year ID um, and so it differs, it's different from my other tables by a little bit. So let me pull that one over and create that relationship for my salaries and I'll do the same for my batting. So let's wire that up to year, get the model looking good. All right, so we're good here. Um, another thing I just don't have time to show today, but to point out is if I hover over these relationships and double click them, uh, something that's new in Power BI Desktop is we have a lot more options as far as how these relationships work. So we have some cardinality options here, so one to many, one to one, things like that. The big one is for cross-filtering. So we have the ability to, to um, support many to many relationships much easier here in, uh, in Power BI Desktop, something that Tabular and Power Pivot really didn't do a great job of. So that's something to point out there. Let's click cancel on that. Um, but the options, um, some of the, the polish and shine too, uh, that we saw in the most recent December update is these buttons for our uh, designer, which are just really nice things for our development teams and our analysts. We can zoom in and zoom out easier, and we have a fit to screen button. So as your models get bigger, those type of buttons just become very handy uh, within the product, and you see the product maturing through that. Uh, let's go create a report off of this now. So we got our relationships. We have some tables there. Um, let's go up to our reporting tab. So we're going to create a report here. Um, let me start with something simple. Let's just go grab fact batting, and I'm just going to grab hits. So we'll do a, a little analysis on our hits. And we'll break that down by year. So I'm just going to grab uh, dim years. And we'll just grow, throw a year name on that. And I want to turn this into, I want to put my year name on my axis. So I get a, a nice bar chart like that. Another thing they added recently is the ability to refresh one table at a time right here from what my report viewer. So over here on the left, if I click this ellipsis, uh, actually the ellipsis next to the, the table names, what I'll get is a drop down and I have a refresh data button. And that will let you refresh one table at a time. So as you're developing, uh, if you're refreshing the data, changing it around behind the scenes, you don't want to have to reload your entire model. That's a nice handy feature just to Go ahead and load up a new table. If I made a change to dim years, you could go pull it right back in there. So that looks good. Um, we pulled in a report. Let's go ahead and add a slicer to this. Uh, we'll slice it up by uh, team. So uh, I clicked on my slicer button there on the left or on the right, created a slicer object here, and let's just slice this by uh, Let's do teams, for instance. So we'll do team name. And you'll see my data's got a lot of, it goes back to the 1800s, something like that. So we have a lot of different team names out here. And with the slicer, it'll slice up my product like that, or my um, table like that. That all looks good. And the next thing I want to show you is a drill down and drill up and how that works here on this bar chart. So let's filter that out. And um, on my bar charts, we have a slicer connected to it, it's affecting my bar chart. We have hits over time here. Let's say we wanted to drill into this a little bit more um, and, and, um, and go down a little deeper on this from year down to, we'll do team and then down to player maybe. So I must, those are all different tables within my sources. So I'm starting with your name. Let's go to team, let's put um, team name there. And then below that, I'm gonna put a player name. So all I did to create the hierarchy was in my axis, I just drug the different fields I wanted available into my axis and, and placed them in the order I wanted. And what you'll see happened is it created these buttons on my visual once it knew there was a hierarchy there. And the way these buttons work, I can click on this one. It'll give me too much data right now because it would just give me too many different variations of, um, of data points. But that would drill down for all the years down to all the teams by year. If you hover over it, it gives you an indication of that. It basically just drills down to the next level for everything. 
Uh, if I click on these, you can see as I'm clicking on year, because of the visual interactions, this is affecting uh, what I see over here in my slicer um, as well. And I'm not drilling down. So because of that interaction with the other objects within the report, to turn on the drill in, I have to click this drill down button. So let me unhighlight that, and if I click my drill down button, you'll notice that it, it changed colors, and now I can drill down into my data. So now if I click one of these data points, instead of it being a, a visual uh, slicer on the report, it drills down into that year I just clicked on, and drills down to my next level, which is my uh, team names. Now say, for instance, I want to go look at the Milwaukee Brewers, I can click on that, and now it's drilling down into the players for that specific year for that specific team. If I want to drill up, the drill up button is here on the top left hand corner so I could drill back up if I wanted to. And that report was a little ugly as far as figuring out who was, um, who was the best on the teams and what have you. If I want to fix that up a little bit, we have an ellipsis up on the top right corner of my bar chart. And this has always pretty much been there since, uh, let me kill that. Um, let me get all the way back up to the top to get the sorts. Uh, I can't sort. Sorry, this is, a, this is a bad example of that. But if um, um, because I have a, a weird sort order going on here, let me drill down one more time. You could sort it by um, by the hits. So I think I'll do here. Yeah, because of my sort order, it's a little off. Um, we could also on regular bar charts sort this by uh, who had the most hits for a given team. Um, one thing you'll notice is these are still working. The, the slicer is still working there. So it's slicing it down my team. So if I go back up to the top again, let's go pick up, uh, let's do the Boston Red Sox. You can see all the history they had. But the Baltimore Maryland's, for instance, uh, just had this one year. Um, I can turn the drill down back on for that, though, and drill down into just their data and see the, the players they had. So that's how the uh, the drill down drill up works here. Um, pretty simple to, to use. They built it right into the products. So you don't have to do a lot of setup. Um, quite a bit easier than power uh, performance point, and it gives you the that the same drill down drill up options that a lot of people were missing from performance point. Uh, let's look at the automatic date drill down. I do want to show that. So let's grab. Um, I'm going to create a new visual. So I'm just going to click in my white space, and I'm going to grab birth date. So this is just a, um, a birth date for my players. And you'll notice as soon as I brought it in on my axes, this is really just a date field. It broke it out by year, quarter, month, day. So it reads the fact that it's a date field and it automatically creates this uh, drill down effect for you. So I could do um, birth date. Let's go ahead and put hits on here again. Uh, let's do stolen bases, something like that to mix it up. Uh, Stolen bases. Stolen bases by year, and let's start teams on the axis. Let's do this. So we'll do team name on our axis. Legend. Oh, my filter is filtering it out there. So let me get rid of that. Uh, team name. So here we go, we see stolen bases by year um, across time. Uh, so it looks like we had a lot for a while and then we had a dip. And again, all I have is a date column on here. I don't have a, a drill down hierarchy set up. But if I click on my drill down here, I can drill into a particular year, down to quarters, and then down to months, and then down to uh, particular days. So. Uh, it, it does the, the, the date drill down automatically for us there. So now I want to show you the uh, import of custom visualizations. So let me delete this slicer because uh, that slicer ha has some options to it, but one of the, some of the better visualizations out there are, are new options for slicers. So if I want to pull in my, uh, if I want to go get a new visualization and I want to pull it into my, my desktop, I mentioned that we would have to go out to the visual gallery. So let's go ahead and go out there. I already had it open for us, let's save some time. Um, and we see a list of visual 
samples available to us. Um, you can come out here and play with these and download them. The one I want to show today is the Chiclet Slicer. So if I just click on Chiclet Slicer, it tells you a little bit about it and shows you a quick thing on that. Click download and agree, it'll download the, the, the .pbviz file. That's all it takes to get it downloaded and then to import it into my Power BI desktop, all I have to do is there's the quickest way that I usually do it is click on this little ellipsis under my visualizations. And when I click on that ellipsis, it pops up and says, um, hey, here's a little warning. You're about to import something from a third party, but I just click import. And I have a list of the different ones I've downloaded. I'm going to go grab the Chiclet Slicer, which uh, right here on top, and I'll click open. Uh, successfully imported it, and now I have the visualization in, in my list of visualizations. So I'm going to click on that, I'm going to click on the white space, click on the chiclet slicer, and I'll give you an idea of, um, we'll do the team names again, and you can see it just gives you a different visual representation of, of a slicer. Um, different options, you know, this is all about visualizations for Power BI, so you get better options, uh, community-driven for uh, for our, our slicer. This is fully interactive, just like the others. I can click on this, look at the Cincinnati, let's go look at the Cincinnati Reds, so I can see the hits there. Let me drill back up, because I drilled in too far on that guy, so I can see the hits by the Reds, drill back up on the stolen bases, see the hits by the Reds over time there. Um, and this one gives me some more options too uh, that we won't get into today, but if I click on my paintbrush here for format and I click on the chiclets option, we can change the colors of these. So I can make the selected color a red to make it really stand out if I wanted to. You could change this, the theming color of this to fit your, your, um, your company's themes, change the colors around for that. Um, we can also import images, so instead of seeing text, we could uh, set up images to um, fill in these um, um, uh, these chiclets, these little buttons within the chiclet slicer. Uh, so that, again, that's how you get the visualizations in. Uh, a lot of options out there to play with. I definitely recommend going and playing with them. Some really cool ones. Um, they pulled in some some cool KPI type options. There's a time um, a time slicer, uh, what's it called, the time slider type slicer, uh, similar to what you have within Excel that they give you here in Power BI Desktop. All right, how are we doing on time? I want to hop over to PowerBI.com now and show you some of the options out there. Um, I knew I had a lot of stuff to show, so I knew I'd cut some stuff out here. So let's go out to our PowerBI.com site now. So all that, again, was in Power BI Desktop. Um, Real quickly, if I wanted to publish this, if you've not used this before, there is just a publish button right here in the office ribbon bar. If you just click this and you sign into your Power BI desktop, it'll publish it up to the powerbi.com site, which I've already done to save us some time. Let's go out here and log in. Sign in there. So I'm now signed into my PowerBI.com site, and you'll see I have a lot of um, demo junk type stuff out here. Um, let me click on a dashboard that isn't completely broken there. And what we have is we have our data sets broken down, our reports, and our dashboards. So earlier, uh, I imported this baseball uh, dashboard report and uh, a dashboard there to show you what we have. So with the dashboard data set, um, a couple of new features out here within PowerBI.com uh, are, um, let's just walk through this, this data set real fast. So for the refresh schedule, so this is the data set. This is the connection to my SQL database on premises right now. This is going to use my uh, personal gateway to get back to my SQL database server back there. Um, if I click on refresh now, we'll go and try and pull out the the latest data from my database. Um, if I click on schedule refresh, 
it takes me to the settings for this particular data set, and I can see my gateway status, so I can see that my personal gateway is online. Um, I can schedule the refresh, so I can turn this on to schedule uh, daily or nightly, whatever schedule I'd want to use. I can set the credentials for it, things like that. Uh, very recently, they just added uh, featured Q&A questions, so I can add some featured questions to my uh, data set. I'll show you that on the dashboard here in, in one second. Uh, another new option available is if I click on the ellipsis for my data set again, we have this option for quick insights. So if I click on quick insights, what this does is goes out and reads my data set and it kind of just scans the data uh, to see what kind of insights, how the data relates to itself, uh, what attributes relate, and it just creates some quick and dirty uh, reports and charts for me off my data set. does it all automatically without me having to really do anything. So I can click on view insights now. And you can see for baseball, it created all these different uh, insights um, off of that data set. So kind of players by active franchise, um, you can click on this and, and zoom it in. I can pin the visual to my dashboard if I want to. It works just like any other report piece. Uh, the nice thing is I didn't really have to do anything. It kind of is a way to just quickly go see what you have out in your data if you want to. Um, my data is not the best, so it's giving me a lot of pie charts and things like that. But if you have sales data, some data that really relates to each itself better and you have your model set up well, it does a good job of reading through that. If I go to my reports, let's go look at the baseball report. Uh, this is the warning I was telling you about with the custom visualization. So I built this earlier with the Chiclet customization on it. And you'll notice right when you hit it, you get this warning telling you, hey, there's some third party thing. Are you sure you trust this? So you have to click on enable customization custom visualizations and at the moment you have to click on that every time you hit this report so that's one of the things that we're hoping gets fixed um, in future updates um, soon so if I click on LA this this trolls down like this now if I want to pin this to a dashboard um, I can click on the pin button here on my visual so I can click on pin visuals and this would pin to a dashboard I can pin it to a newer existing dashboard that's all um, features that have been there for a while now one of the newer features is I can pin my live page now. So this button up above the report as a whole allows me to pin the entire report to a dashboard and actually makes it an interactive piece of the dashboard at that point. So let me just go pin this to a uh, new, we'll call this um, uh, presentation, pin it live. You'll notice now it created a dashboard for me up under dashboards. I'll click on that. and um, it does not support the the new customer visualizations just yet. Again, we're hoping that gets fixed soon. But you'll see it does make the report um, interactive now. So I can click on this, and as I click on the different pieces, it highlights things out. If I had more on my report, like slicers that, that weren't custom that I could slice on, it would slice this report down and interact right here within the dashboard. So I'm not in a dash. I'm not in a report right now. This is a piece of a report within a dashboard. I can also now resize that. Uh, they've they've improved that um, that interface quite a bit, where I can drag around and and resize my different pieces on my canvas for my my dashboard. A few other things they've added. I wanted to show if I go back to baseball demo, you can import. Um, uh, you can show images within your dashboard and again drag and drop the size on that. You can set it up to a custom link. So I had this link to the source of where I got my baseball data from. Do things like that. So you could link to uh, maybe documentation on your report um, in, in the internet URL, something along those lines. Um, and on this dashboard, I pulled in an Excel uh, worksheet. So if you again save it in Excel, document to your OneDrive and import it. So underneath my reports, you'll notice I have an Excel Power BI demo. It's got this little Excel button next to it showing that it's an Excel file that is living on my OneDrive. So I didn't import it as a data source. I imported it as an Excel file. When you go to pull in a file, it asks you what you'd like to do. Um, and then once you do that, if I click on this, Um, you see I have a sheet of data here. I could pick another sheet and, for instance, if I want to grab this table, 
I can pin it up to a different dashboard. So let me switch that up to uh, existing dashboard to my presentation dashboard. And again, it's grabbing the, the, the cells I selected. And I can click pin, go up to my presentation dashboard. And you see I have my interactive report here. I have my Excel data here. And I can start building out a dashboard of the different pieces um, that I want to start people off on. Now, if I click on this Excel piece, it drills me down into the Excel workbook where that, uh, that piece of data came from. Um, last thing I want to show before I open up for questions, um, if I go back to, let's go back to my baseball, baseball here, we have our Q&A. So this is something that's been around for a while. It's been around since uh, the Office 365 Power BI site. Um, actually, we used to use NFL scoring. We'll do stick with baseball. Uh, what it's um it's a common language. It's a common query language to analyze your data. So it's been out there for a while. I think it's gotten overlooked by some some people in the community um, for how much power it really gives. So just having that data set out there, creating a dashboard from it, I can do things like um, I want to see hits by year by team, something like that. That's probably a little bit too much data, but really what you can see is I'm not really, this isn't really like having to type a, a SQL select statement. I can just ask the, question, the data questions and on the fly it creates reports for me. Uh, so again, it, this isn't something that's super new, but it's something I did want to point out because it's, it's a really powerful piece. So I could do uh, hits by year, hits by, um, let's do hits by player, uh, full name. You can see I get a list of the different players and the most hits out there. Uh, I could say see this as um, as pie chart maybe. It's going to probably be a little too big. So even just giving it language like telling you what type of chart you want to see it as, it'll change the chart around like that. Um, really nice, easy. Any user could use this. They don't have to know a lick about creating charts or writing uh, SQL queries, and they can go and start analyzing the data and playing with it and seeing what's going on there. Uh, so with that, that's what I had for today. I know it was a, a lot of material. Uh, I really just wanted to show, again, high level of, um, uh, of all the updates that are out there. I did have a couple more slides on where we're going. So where we're going, at least hopefully, Microsoft at the end of last year came out with a, their BI roadmap. Um, and what they're promising to do for us is standardize the cloud and on-premise experience. Um, they've called out four different pieces that they are committed, committing to integrating and standardizing across their cloud and on-premise uh, products. Everybody's really hoping they, they pull off on this promise. So we're going to have page-native reports. So these would be the, your standard SSRS reports, uh, interactive Power BI reports, uh, mobile reports are coming from what is now DataZen, the product they just bought this year, and then analytical Excel charts and, and data grids uh, will hopefully all be integrated within the Power BI service and then in some way, shape, or form within things like the, uh, the, um, uh, the latest SSRS that's coming out. And along those lines, SQL 2016, the latest technology preview that just came out, does allow you to pin SQL Server reports to Power BI. I haven't tested the functionality yet. I haven't gotten uh, to it yet. I just got my got the latest one installed, but haven't been able to test its interactivity with Power BI yet. Um, they do have some uh, TechNet articles out there showing how to do it, though. Um, they also with that release, uh, pulled in the DataZen mobile reports and put them into SSRS, and they've integrated those into the Power BI mobile app. So if you open up Power BI mobile now, you you get a new question when you open it up asking, are you connecting to an SSRS server, or are you connecting to your Power BI site? Um, and that's how they're going to deliver the, the mobile dashboards from your on-premise um, SSRS going forward. Along the lines of integrating Excel, I, I mentioned I got roadblocked by this with the 32-bit uh, requirement, but they did just come out with the Power BI publisher for Excel, which is going to be an add-in for Excel that allows you to pin pieces of Excel data up into uh, your Power BI dashboards too. So they're starting to integrate the different products. Uh, they got a long way to go for it, but hopefully it, they, they pull off what they're, they're uh, committing to doing. 
So next steps, if you're interested in Power BI, what I would say is definitely go download the, the designer, actually I should say uh, desktop preview. Um, it's available from that link. Um, sign up for an account. They're free for personal accounts. Um, and then watch our free webinars out here on pragmaticworks.com. So with that, uh, Liz, I can open up for questions. I know we're really short on time, but. Yeah, Brad, you actually have access to all the questions. There are a ton of them, so it might just okay. be easier for you to run through them real quick and kind of pick out some of the ones you think would be appropriate for everybody. Yep, absolutely. Let me see if I can get that there. Uh, will we get a copy of the presentation? Yes, absolutely. I'll put it on the uh, on my, my blog post or on my blog site as a post uh, this afternoon. I'll get it up there for sure. So that's bradgall.com. You can just go there and see it. Yeah, and if you also uh, um, follow us on uh, Twitter, we'll also post a link to it on Twitter. So if you're not already following us on Twitter, go ahead and do that, because um, that's a great way to stay informed on all of our free training and any updates yeah. that we do. Absolutely, definitely follow Pragmatic Works on Twitter. Um, let's see here, can I sort through this? Um, and so since we're short on time too, I will point out, I have carved out, historically I've been a little bit bad about this, but I did carve out some time um, the end of this week and hopefully next week too to answer some of these questions. So I will get a copy of all these questions and I was planning on making some blog posts on them out of my blog site over the next two weeks too. So um, uh, keep an eye out there for that if you have a question that you're waiting on. I'm having a little trouble it's fitting this all on my screen. Let's do this. Here we go. Uh, can you still have an on-premise installation? Um, we are medical and cannot violate HIPAA. So yes, for Power BI right now, it's it's in the cloud only. Part of that roadmap is that they're supposed to sync it up with on-premise and cloud. They haven't gotten there yet. Um, if you look on one of the one of the um, one of the requests out there on the Power BI site is to be able to deploy a Power BI desktop file to an on-prem solution. I believe what they're targeting for that it would be to deploy it to your SSRS server. So you have to have an SSRS server and be able to deploy it locally. Um, uh, do you know if Microsoft will be stopping or slowing down the updates of the Excel add-ins? I don't have any information specifically on that, but um, it does seem like they have slowed them down. I, I, my my feeling is that they are focusing now on the the Power BI desktop instead. Excuse me. Um, let's see here. Uh, can we use SharePoint to publish reports? And what are the different options for sharing BI reports um, if there's a security concern? So you can't use SharePoint with it yet. That's another one that I know they have requested out there, and I think they said that they have it in plan. Um, it would probably be something that would come out with SharePoint 2016 if I had this to guess. Right now, there is no good option for sharing on-premise with uh, the Power BI, unfortunately, until they come up with one of those solutions. Really, your only option is to save the, the Power BI desktop file. So what I was developing there gets saved as a PBIX file. You could then save that out, and if you have a real small team and you're just doing some analytics like that, you could you could share it that way. That's really your only option without the, um, the cloud to be able to, to share those. Uh, does PowerBI.com still require an Office 365 subscription? No. Uh, no, it does not. So you can just sign up just for PowerBI.com right now, and it's just a $10 per user for that now. Let's see here. Um, will the webinar be recorded? Yep, it's, it's being recorded. Um, and like Liz said, if you follow Pragmatic Works on Twitter, they usually send out a, a link to the recording whenever it becomes available on the on the website. Yep. And you also uh, will receive a follow-up email from GoToWebinar with the link to the recording as well. Awesome, cool. Um, and yes, there are a lot more questions. So I'll definitely go through this list of questions and get some of them answered out on the blog post. Um, let's see here. Let's see if I can find. And maybe one more good one before we sign out. Uh, this is a good question. Why wouldn't you always use a direct source rather than import importing? Is it much slower since it's not compressed in memory? And yep, you, that's ex the exact answer to that question. So the difference between direct query and whether you import it into memory is if it's a if it's a significant amount of data, it's going to be way quicker to to pull it into the um, into the in memory solution, and um, it, it the the user interactivity will be much faster than if you set up direct query, because as they're interacting with the report, it's having to run queries against your SQL database. 
so I think I'll leave it at that one, Liz, okay, um, and, and follow up on the blog post. Okay, yep. Like Brad said, he will we'll get these questions to him and he'll follow up on the blog post. I know there were a ton of questions and there was no way to get to all of those today. We could probably just have a whole session on these questions alone. Um, if you guys think of any more questions after we end the webinar, you can please feel free to email Brad. His uh, contact information is there on the screen. Or you can also email me, Liz. It's the email that comes with all your go-to webinar information, and I'll be happy to pass that along. Um, as we said earlier, again, you will receive an email tomorrow with a link to the recording, and Brad will post this on his um, the PowerPoint presentation on his blog. So pay attention to that um, on our Twitter page. We'll definitely post a link to that. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Liz. Thanks.